everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you are with me for the first time, my name is Melissa Reed and I am a mixed media intuitive artist from Pennsylvania. Um, today we are continuing one more time, this is the final time that I'm going to be doing a test piece for a large 30 by 40 inch mixed media collage which I am going to be entering into a juried exhibit which the deadline is actually tomorrow, and I am super excited to say that I just got done with it. I have been putting progress pics at the end of my videos, but I think instead of doing that this time, I'm going to do just a dedicated video of the whole piece and the process that I went through next week, so be on the lookout for that. So for this particular piece, I'm starting with an 8 inch by 8 inch cradled wooden board that I went ahead and primed with some white gesso. I let that dry and then I'm just, I went in with Mars Black, which you can see dries kind of flat, which is kind of what I was looking for. So I'm just getting started here by taking some book pages that I am randomly cutting and arranging and you will see me... Um, lay down pieces of paper and move them around, which is the beauty of collage because you can try things out before you actually commit to adhering them to your substrate. So I kind of just work randomly without a plan and test things out. And when something looks good to me, that's when I pull out my adhesive. And what I am using here is what I have been using, if you've seen any of my other videos, I this is actually a Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. I like this as a choice for an adhesive because it is a matte medium and therefore it does not put any gloss down that I might not want later. I typically do end up finishing these with a gloss, but I like to be able to have that option because not all of the pieces that I make, I want to be glossy at the end. But this stuff is great. It is. It works just like acrylic paint, um, so you can actually mix your acrylic paints with it, which I do and I will be doing in this piece. And that's actually the part that I wanted to test out. But for now, I'm just getting started with using some collage. And I typically don't paint the background one solid color, but I wanted to do something a little bit different today, just so I'm not continuously making the same type of piece over and over. This is similar, but it will have a little bit of a different look to it. So in addition to the book pages there, that piece that I just glued down is a gel print that I made. Um, I believe I made that one in a video. If you want to check out, I made black and white collage papers. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but if you look back through my videos, and actually I can just attach it at the end. They're problem solved but I believe I did make this one on that video. And I'm probably gonna be doing another video in the future making some more collage papers because I am running out of all of the cool ones because those are the ones that I tend to always reach for. So I'll go ahead and do a video for that because I don't know about you, but I know I love watching people make gel prints. It's just, I don't know, something about it, love it. So I will put one out there for you. And if you feel the same way about it, check it out. So the reason why I went for that particular print there is I was trying to keep some like colors. So we've got the book page, which already has that natural kind of cream colored paper color to it. And I wanted to not introduce a whole bunch of different colors into this. So I am basically going for a lot of neutrals, a lot of black, white, cream, and then just little bits of color. And the one that I'm cutting right now is actually a print that I made in another one of my videos, which I will attach at the end. That's a technique that I learned from Created and Made Studios. And if you have not checked out her channel, you definitely are going to want to do that. She has some really cool ideas and does really great work. But that is some uh, copper foil that I used with acrylic paint and pulled a gel print with that. And it's a really fun technique. I definitely recommend watching her video or my video, whichever one you want, and just learn the technique. It's great. And it produces these really great metallic kind of papers. You can see there, it's got the acrylic paint in the background, but you have that copper foil. So it just gives it a really great look that even if you use a metallic paint, you're not gonna get quite that same quality. And right here, I'm going to address something real quick because someone asked me a question in the comments of one of my videos. Does the matte medium 
dull the look of the foil? And the short answer is a little bit, but if you're using it on the whole piece, it's still gonna have a good sheen to it. But if you're using it next to foil that doesn't have the medium on top of it, you might be able to tell a slight difference, but I don't find that it bothers me at all. So I wouldn't let that hold you back from using it. But okay, so I have gone ahead and put down a few of those pieces with the foil on it, and now I'm just going in with a little more of the collage papers that I have made. That is just tissue paper on which I have printed. Um, I have like this, I don't even know what it is. I got it at the Dollar Tree, and it, it, it serves some function that is not supposed to be art, but I think it makes the absolute best polka dot prints, and I make those and use them all the time. I just love them. Um, and what I love about doing them on the tissue paper is, as you can see here, when you put that down, the tissue kind of just melts into the background. And really what you're left with is just the polka dots and maybe just a, just a slight variation in tone of the color and pattern underneath it, which I find a really desirable quality in my work. And that's why I like to use the tissue paper. Now I've used regular and I've used the wet strength. That there was the uh, regular tissue and I don't really find that I have too much of a problem keeping that from ripping. As long as you're careful, you can pull good prints on the regular tissue paper. Um, nothing against the wet strength. I just have a hard time finding it sometimes. It's available on Amazon. Occasionally they are out of stock a lot and it's pretty expensive because it ships Typically, at least the one that I found ships from out of the country. So I decided I wanted to keep going with the regular tissue and see what I could do. And as long as you're careful, you really don't have too much trouble with that. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd mention that real quick too. Uh, but so since I had the black paint out, I just went ahead and decided to put the edge on the piece now. I will do this at different points in my piece, sometimes at the very end, but usually not because... I like to be able to get an idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished, and that gives it a much more finished and polished quality, doing it somewhere in the middle so you can kind of really see what you're working with. All right, so here I just got another book page, and I folded it in half, and I'm just cutting out some random oval circular shapes because I want to put that down on top of what I already have going on there on the board. And what I like about cutting these holes is you can see through them, obviously, because they're holes, so you can see the pattern from the background. And it just adds a little bit more dimension. And my work is all about layers, so it's just another layer that adds more visual interest. This piece went through kind of a, a point coming up here where I really, really liked the direction of it. And then I completely did something that I really wish I wouldn't have done because it kind of, I don't want to say ruined it, but it made me like it a whole lot less. And I'll point that out as soon as we get there. But I had to keep reminding myself that this is a test piece. I was just trying something out. So would I like to get a finished piece that I love and might be able to do something with? Sure. But the point of it was to test out a technique that I wanted to use on this larger piece. And as soon as we get there, I'll explain it. It actually didn't work at all on this piece, hated it, completely kind of ruined where I was going. But when I put it on the larger piece, I loved it and it worked really well. So not every technique is for every piece, but it's always good to try new things and learn because then you know what you like and you know what works for you. And that's always a good thing to have in your back pocket. So I got a little bit more of that print that I had with the copper foil and the teal acrylic paint on it here. And I decided to mimic the, sh the shape with the holes in it that I had on there because it's good to have repetition to a point. Um, well, I shouldn't say it's good to have. It can be a choice to have repetition in your piece. It doesn't mean you have to or not. It is something that I like to employ um, along with balance and color and texture and composition. It's just another artistic tool that I use to pull my pieces together. But you can see I'm just moving it around and I find a spot that I like it in and it's not, I didn't want to have them lined up perfectly. 
So I moved that up a little bit. It's a little shorter than the one that I made with the book page and I think it just really works well. And compositionally so far, I really like the way this is going. Right now what I'm doing is just taking a card and scraping off some of the excess matte medium. You can see where it's around the black up top there. You can see it kind of shining in the light. That's going to dry completely clear with no shine to it at all. But I do like to get the excess off because it's just, it doesn't need to be there and it will build up on the surface. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, sometimes I use that as a textural tool, but I don't always want it there, so I will take that card and scrape off the excess here and there. One thing to note though when you're doing that, if you are scraping over top of tissue paper, you have to just be a little more careful because it is very thin and then it's wet from using the, the adhesive on it, so it wants to tear like crazy. And sometimes they do tear on me, and sometimes I'm actually okay with that because I like the way it tears, but not always. So just if you're going to try to do that, just be extra careful when you are doing that. Okay, so here I took another gel print. It's that black one that you see laying on the right-hand side by my right hand, and I cut out, um, I folded it in the same manner that I did with the book page and with the blue and foil piece and cut out some more holes. But this time, instead of using the, um, the part that I cut out, <clears throat> excuse me, I used the little pieces that I took from it. So I glued those down um, on the right hand side inside the holes of the blue and copper piece. And then I decided that I wanted something going on in the holes on the left hand side. So I did take, I took one of the black pieces, but then I just took random other pieces of paper that I had laying around and cut different shapes. So I'm reusing some of the prints that I already have in there because in my opinion, and for this piece, I wanted to keep everything kind of cohesive. I didn't want to introduce any new colors or patterns or shapes at this point, because right now I'm just drawing from what's already there. And that's going to also help to bring the piece together. Now I'm just trying to figure out what I might want to do next here. So I am just randomly cutting pieces and placing them around to see what looks good. As soon as I set that down, it just reminded me of a rocket ship and I really don't like it very much. So I did end up not using that. Um, but again, like I said with before with the collage, it's great because you can try everything out before putting it down there. I mean, when you're, when you're painting a picture, a portrait or something, the paint is on the canvas because that's how you have to make the piece you can always paint over it, but this way you can kind of get the added bonus of getting to try things out and maybe not putting something down that you don't like. But I end up doing that all over this piece, so I'll show you also how I went ahead and fixed the pieces that I didn't like on here because that's also easy enough to do. I remind myself and I remind others that it is just, it's paper and paint and you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't like it. I don't like things all the time that I choose to do. That's part of being an intuitive artist because I am making those decisions quickly and in the moment. So I don't always, you know, take the time to really think them through because I'm making quick visual decisions. Doesn't mean I'm going to love all of them. And there's always a way to fix them. So it's not the end of the world. And um, I think it's a great way to make art because you're letting yourself go and you're going to probably discover things that you wouldn't necessarily have come up with had you set out to create a specific piece that you have in your head. And again, absolutely nothing wrong with that way of making art. It's just not the way that I do it. So after trying a bunch of different things and not really liking any of them. I'm I'm still going on with more and I'm about to use the technique that I wanted to try for the large piece, which in my opinion kind of just really ruined the momentum that I had going with this one. But I think I pull out a fix in the end, so stick with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this stencil that I'm using here is something that I actually made out of a piece of drawing paper and 
I made it in the same way that you watched me cut those book pages. I just folded in half and cut these like kind of round or oblong shaped, oval shapes, whatever you want to call it, out of the drawing paper. I put a couple coats of gloss gel medium on because that has a little bit more of a protectant in it. And I have had this stencil now for about six months and I have used it over and over and over again and it is holding up really well. So if you can't, if you don't want to buy stencils or if maybe they're not in your budget, because I can, trust me, I, I feel you on that one, maybe try making some this way. You can you can print things out you know, from your computer, you can freehand whatever you wanna do or if you just wanna cut shapes and then put some of that medium on there and you've got yourself a stencil. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I have some copper paint that I mixed a pretty good amount of the matte gel medium with because it makes the paint very translucent. And what I wanted was a pattern over top of the whole entire piece, but I still wanted to be able to see what was going on underneath. And I achieved that. And right here, I don't mind it so much, but I kept going with it. And that's kind of the point at which I did not really love what happened. I'll show you here in a second. I had it in my head that the pattern needed to be going off of the edge of the paper. I'm sorry, off of the edge of the board. So right here, I'm laying it down and putting some more of the paint and medium mixture on there. And I don't like it, <laughs> like at all. I actually contemplated trying to get it off of the canvas. That's how little, or off of the board, that's how little I liked it. But because I'm using the matte medium and not the gel gloss, I wasn't gonna be able to get it off of there in enough of a way that it was going to make me happy. Now, if you use the gloss gel medium, if that's down, it does create kind of like a plasticky sort of coating, so you would be able to actually wipe it off as long as the paint's still wet. So here is me undoing that last step. I just got a little bit of the black paint on my brush there and am kind of just cleaning off. Obviously, I'm not gonna take it off of the whole entire piece, but I am removing it from the edges because I really liked the way the solid black looked better than having that kind of just running off of the sides. So it doesn't look bad there. It's better than it was, but I'm not happy with it yet. So. I'm kind of just going back to the collage and trying to see what I can make happen. And I try lots of different things. That's a, another gel print there that I made using that uh, polka dot texture piece, but it's it's the, um, the negative space instead of the positive of the polka dots. I will, again, uh, be making some more of this, so I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I pulled out this, I think it's an aluminum foil. Yeah, an aluminum foil roll that I have in my studio because it it's nice and th sturdy and thick and I'm using it as a stamp here to make circles. And I like the way that they're turning out. I felt it needed something darker in the middle and that does bring a little bit more of a focal point in, but I still really wasn't kind of loving it so much when I got everything on there. So I kind of had to just keep going and on the fly problem solving to try to figure out what it was that was missing or did I have too much of something and I needed to address that issue. But all of these problems, like I said, are fixable. I kept thinking here that it needed more black, which it did, it definitely benefited from a little more black. So I took one of those color shapers and just dipped the very edge of it into some black and kind of went along and made some lines in some random lines in some places. And then I decided that I wanted to kind of outline some of the collage papers that I cut. So I went back in with the color shaper and the black paint again and went along the um, perimeter, I guess, of where the paper was adhered down to the board. And I think that helped a little bit because it was looking a little unfocused and busy. 
And that at least kind of brought some shape back into it, which I think it was lacking very much. So this is just where I was doing that. I'm going back through and kind of, I guess, for lack of a better term, like re-outlining all of the cutouts because they were kind of starting to blend into the background. And that's typically something that I want to happen. I, I want there to be layers, but I don't necessarily want them to blend too much because then the the visual layers become like one layer which was kind of starting to happen so basically i am reintroducing the layers visually if that makes sense but then i just couldn't shake the feeling that it needed more black it just it had a lot of light color there in the center and then when i put that gold or I'm sorry, the copper over top of it, that was like another color of the same tone. So it really kind of just washed everything out, I think is the best way to describe it. So I went in with my smaller color shaper and just using some more of that black paint, got some black areas in there. And then I also kind of just went in and started covering up pieces of it that I didn't necessarily like which ended up being kind of a lot of the, um, excuse me, around the edges. One thing that I didn't like was how I lost all of that black around the perimeter. So you'll see here in a minute that I go back in and really just kind of clean all of that up. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I actually did that off camera because I had set the piece down for it to dry between layers and the more I looked at it the more I was just so unhappy that the black was gone that I thought I'm just gonna do this now and when I turn the camera back on I'll just show the work that I did so that's what I'm gonna have you see here coming up in just a moment there you can see where I covered the majority of everything around the edges up with the black and it's already looking tons better but I still kept feeling like I need something dark in the center so I took another sheet of gel print that I had made, and that was just some, I think that was just a solid black one that I crumpled up some tissue paper and laid down so it's got some texture in it. But I like that about it because it's not just a solid hunk of black, which I think also would have worked, but this is a little more interesting. But at that point, I wanted to bring some of that shape back that I had from the book pages, so I went ahead and cut another piece of the same design with the holes in the center and just started laying that out to see where I might want to put that. I definitely wanted it laying over top of that black that I had just laid down there, but I wasn't 100% sure exactly how I wanted the orientation to be. I wanted it to be similar in shape to the other one, which is kind of like uneven as you can see there, and I moved it around a little bit on the board trying to get it exactly where I wanted it, and what I thought worked really well since the piece on the left goes down to the bottom edge, I kind of wanted that the piece that I'm putting down now to go up to the top because it just gives it a little more balance and I really kind of liked the way that that was looking. So once I got that all glued down and went on in with my card and got the excess medium up off of it, I let it dry. When I came back in, I thought I might want to put some more black polka dots over top of the whole thing. And this is kind of the final thing that I'm doing to this piece. And with this polka dot texture plate that I have here, I do something really, really cool on the large scale piece, which I'm going to show you next week. It was an idea that I had. I had no idea if it was going to work or not, but I tested it out on just like a piece of paper that I had laying around and it worked beautifully. So I cannot wait to share that with you. Make sure you check out my next video. But once I had that glued down, I went in and outlined that piece like I had with the, the others just to kind of keep that going. And... 
with the excess paint that I had there, I just kept going in and cleaning up any areas that I didn't like, reclaiming a little bit more of the black background there that you can see that I'm doing now. Um, incidentally, if you're interested in these color shapers, I will have a link to those and all of the paints and everything else that I'm using um, in the description box. So feel free to check that out when you're done here. But that is the finished piece. I think it turned out pretty good. It could have gone in a lot of different directions and this is the one that I chose. Um, I think it definitely looks better than it did after I laid the copper down, but I still think I could have made different compositional choices, but I think overall I'm pretty happy with how it ended up at the end. But thank you guys for checking out my video again. I appreciate each and every one of you that has taken your time to watch my work and to subscribe. And if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, please hit the subscription button. I am so close to 2000 subscribers. I think as of right now making this video, I am about 105 away. So if we could hit 2000, that would be great. And also don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. That really helps out my channel. Um, you might wanna also click the bell notifications because sometimes YouTube doesn't like to push videos for some reason. I don't really know how it all works, but that way you'll be notified every time I put out a video. And make sure you check out next week's video to see my large 30 by 40 inch piece in its finished state. I'm pretty excited about the way it's turned out. But anyway, have a wonderful week and I will talk to you all again soon. Take care.